Hello baseball fans, King Ikibu coming to you live from the underground bunker deep beneath Tuktayaktuk, where we are playing the last day of the 1961 season here in Replay Baseball, PC Replay Baseball. And as we suspected last time, the Detroit Tigers used their easy schedule that they had at the end of the year to just steamroll over everybody. They won their last five games and they only lost one of their last, how many games is this? That's uh, six plus five, one of their last 12 as they had this easy schedule to cruise to the American League pennant by four games over Baltimore with a 105 and 57 record. So they congratulate the 1961 Detroit Tigers. They are the American League champions. And another highlight here is we look at the leaders. Norm Cash was a 400 hitter in the replay. He had exactly 400 average with a 504 on base and 756 slugging. He is certainly, even though Mickey Mantle hit, how many home runs did he finish with? He finished with 66 home runs. An excellent year himself. 348, 472, 766. In spite of those great numbers, Norm Cash is the MVP of the American League with a 400 average, 504, 756, and 52 home runs. So I don't think any other 400 hitter had over 50 home runs. So Norm Cash is in a class by himself. But we still have to decide the National League. They played the first game of the doubleheader, and San Francisco won by a score of 4-3. to three. Here behind Billy O'Dell over Lou Burdett. Cepeda had a home run. Frank Thomas homered for Milwaukee, and MVP was Billy O'Dell, the starting pitcher. That forces a final game in the National League between the top two teams from Milwaukee, San Francisco at Milwaukee. If San Francisco wins, there will be a first place tie for the top of the National League. That will lead to a, that's what they did in those days. They had a three game playoff and that's what we will do. A three game playoff in the National League. However, if Milwaukee wins, that will give the pennant to the Milwaukee Braves and we will have a 1961 World Series of the Milwaukee Braves and the Detroit Tigers. In real life, it was New York and Cincinnati, the third place teams in both leagues. But here it would be Milwaukee at Detroit. San Francisco has something to say about that first. And so here's... So here is the lineups for... The visiting San Francisco Giants. Leading off and playing second base, Joey Amalfitano. Batting second, the third baseman, Jim Davenport. Batting third, the center fielder, Willie Mays. Batting fourth, the first baseman, Willie McCovey. Batting fifth, the left fielder, Orlando Cepeda. Batting sixth, the right fielder, Felipe Alou. Batting seventh, the catcher, Hobie Landreth. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Jose Pagan and batting ninth today's starting pitcher Mike McCormick. Oh, this is batting numbers. We don't want that. We want his pitching numbers. We'll see those later. And for the Milwaukee Braves, who are currently in first place and hoping to avoid a playoff, leading off and playing right field Lee May. Batting second, the third baseman Eddie Matthews. Batting third, the center fielder Hank Aaron. Batting fourth. The first baseman, Joe Adcock. Batting fifth, the catcher, Joe Torrey. Batting sixth, the left fielder, Frank Thomas. Batting seventh, the second baseman, Frank Bowling. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Roy McMillan. And batting ninth, the starting pitcher, Bob Boole. Bob Boole has a record this year of 11-6 and 6 and 344 with a 116 whip. So here is Joy Amalfitano to lead off for the Giants in this critical 162nd game. Oh, this is 154th game. I'm sorry. That's the American League. They had 162 games. In the National League, they only had 154. But it is the final game of the year. And Amalfitano is batting 235 with a homer and 21 RBIs. And he's going to pop out to third base to start the game. One away. One out. 
Here's Jimmy Davenport batting 231 with 12 homers and 49 RBIs. And he is rolls a defense card and rolls to bowling. He makes an easy play for the second out. And brings up Willie Mays. Willie Mays is underperforming this season. His percentages are about right, but his homers are eight homer, homers below his real-life value of 40. So he still has a last day. He can get another couple, hopefully. And he gets a walk. Hits the W on Buol. Buol walks a lot of guys. He's pitching way. One of the main reasons why Milwaukee's in first place is the play of Bob Buol because... Well, we'll see in a second. Say that his real life record was 9 and 10 with a 4.11 ERA and a 1.48 whip. And in the replays, 11 and 6 with 3.43, 1.16. He struck out the same. His walks were down. His hits were way down. He's pitched way more innings. And uh, that's why, probably one of the main reasons why Milwaukee is in first place. And it is fitting, therefore that he is pitching this crucial 154th game of the season. Here's Willie McCovey with Willie Mays on. He batted 287, 13 homers, and 58 RBIs. He is underperforming as well. But he can do some damage here if he rolls that six column. There's a home run here. There's a probable home run here and a possible home run here, as long as he doesn't roll a... if he rolls a five or six. So he can do some damage. But he hits a one, which is just a pop out. No runs, no hits, and one left on. Bottom of the first. So here's Mike McCormick. And he, in real life, was 13 and 16 with a 320. In the replay, he is 19 and 9 with a 368. So his pitching wise, he's worse. But he's been getting the run support in the replay and thus has a 19-9 and record instead of 13-16. and So he's a very good guy to have. He's going for his 20th win of the season here today and he hopes that he gets it. But he gives up a 6-6 to start the ball game and we have a possible home run. If we roll a 6 here, we'll have a home run. If we roll a 1, it's a base hit. Not a good start for Mike McCormick. And here it comes... The powerful Eddie Matthews. He's batting. He has 40 home runs, 118 RBIs versus real life. He had th only 32 and 91. His average is much better. His slugging is much better. And his on base is much better. One of the main reasons why Milwaukee's in first place. And he's going to get a base hit here. He rolls a 19. So they have the first two men on. Off the Malfitano's glove. Here's Hank Aaron. He is batting 300 with 25 homers and 121 RBIs. So his RBIs are there. His home runs are nine below his real life and his average is 27 points below. But he's gonna face the left-hander here and has an excellent opportunity here to add to his numbers. And he is going to fly out the left field. He had a good column, but McCormick doesn't give up a lot of hits. He gives up a he's pretty good against walks but he gives up home runs one out. Then on first here's Joe Adcock he has 32 homers 101 RBIs and batting 283 very close to his real life totals and he's going to hit into an inning ending double played so that after one inning we are scoreless Here's Orlando Cepeda batting 301 versus 311 in real life. 38 homers in the replay, 46 in real life. And he's going to have a weak foul out to start the second inning. Alou batting 278 with 21 homers and 53 RBIs. He's going to have a pop out. A couple of pop out foul outs to start the second inning. Hobie Landreth is up he is a part-time catcher he's only batting 179 he's underperforming here to this year and he's going to ground out to adcock to end the inning and just like that just like that the inning's over bottom of the second 
Here's Joe Torre, 275 hitter with six homers, 33 RBIs. And he's going to almost homer, but he gets a base hit. So they had a couple close calls to the Milwaukee Braves. A couple home runs they could have had just fell short. There's Frank Thomas, who's batting 285 with 32 homers, five more than real life, and 88 RBIs. He's been hot lately, too. This time he strikes out for the first out here in the second inning. Frank Bowling. He has 18 homers, 59 RBIs, batting 259. And he's going to get a base hit on the splits. And Torrey will go to third with one out. Excellent scoring opportunity for the Braves here in the second inning. Roy McMillan, five homers, 41 RBIs, batting 239. And they, he has five points where he can get a double play. So they're going to put the infield halfway, hoping for one of those double play numbers to hit. And they hit it. So they escape the inning again. Second double play. That's their second double play turn today. No runs, two hits, and one left on. Top of the third. So the Braves threaten both in the first and second, but the double play ball gets them out of the jams both times here's jose bagan 248 hitter with six homers 35 rbis and he has a chance at a hit but bull com contributes a one so there's no chance of a hit easy play right to the pitcher a little dribbler and that's the first out of the inning no hits for the giants so far the braves have four here's mccormick 234 hitter, no homers, 7 RBIs in 1961. But he walks here. First, I can't say it's the first base runner, but it is first base runner of this inning. Here's Amel Fatano. He popped out first time. All right, should we try to hit and run? He's a one runner. I don't know if we should try to... He doesn't have any double play, so we'll just swing away. And we have a chance to get a base hit, although Milwaukee's a tough place to get a base hit. Yes, Lee May will make the play. Thanks to his defense and thanks to the ballpark. Two outs, men on first. So with two out, here's Jim Davenport. He grounded to second first time up, looking for some power to try to score the slow running McCormick from first. And he's not going to get it. He's going to strike out to end the inning. Still no hits for the Giants. No runs, no hits, and one left on. Bottom of the third. Here's the pitcher Bob Boole. One of the weakest hitters in the history of baseball. In fact, uh, I think 1963, was it? He went hitless the entire season. No, I better now. I make that's a bold claim. Yes, Striper. Don't you remember Striper? I like them. Anyway. When I was younger, I used to listen to him all the time. Let's see, Bob Boole. Bob Boole. There's one season, is it 63? Let's see, his batting. We want his batting. All right. No. It was 1962. So I wasn't totally off here. 85 plate appearances, 70 at-bats, and not a single base hit. He had two runs. Did he reach? He must have reached on a walk a couple times. He had six walks. That's how he scored his two runs. He had one stolen base, one caught stealing, one RBI. Must have been one of the bases loaded walk. Maybe a sacrifice fly. Not sure. But he went the entire season without a base hit. So he is one of the weakest hitters in the history of baseball. And he strikes out here. He almost got a walk. One out, base is Here's Lee May. He singled the first time up. And is stranded. And he goes out this time. Ground out. out Here's Eddie Matthews. Singled. Yeah, there was first and second. And it was a double play. So Lee May was stranded. This time he walks. So two two out walk to bring up Hank Aaron. Not a good idea, not good strategy to walk someone in front of Hank Aaron. Here it is. 
And he flies out to end the inning. No runs, no hits, and one left on. Top of the fourth. So th after three complete, San Francisco still doesn't have a hit, but this game is scoreless. Here's Willie Mays. He walked first time up. And he strikes out this time. Boole is pitching marvelously. Here's McCovey. Popped out the third. This time he gets the first base hit of the ball game. McCovey is on. He's not a great runner. Here's Cepeda. He fouled out the second base. First time out. And he has a good column, but it's just a line out to right field for the second out. Alou fouled out to the shortstop. So here in the vast foul territory, the second baseman catches one and then the shortstop catches the other. Alou with two out tries to get something with extra base power. And he does here. He has a chance at a homer. Let's see what the ballpark says. So if we roll one, two, three, or four, Alou will have a home run. If we roll five or six, McCovey will just have uh, go to second or third on the base hit. So this is a crucial roll in this ball game. What will we have? We have a two. That is a home run for Felipe Alou. The crowd doesn't like it, but that's home run number 22 for Alou, and it's two nothing Giants. Here's Hobie Landreth. Bob Boole all of a sudden was looking so good. Gave up a couple hits. And the game is, and now he gives up a third in a row. A double to Landreth. A 177 hitter. Two outs, Let's see if Pagan can cash him in from second base. Scoring position. They might walk him. Let's see what they do. No, they don't. But McMillan, who's a great fielder, makes the play to end the inning. But the Giants lead two to nothing. Let's see if they can come back. The Braves can come back. They have Adcock, Torrey, and P Thomas. A lot of power here in this fourth inning. McCormick has propensity to give up the homers. Not this time. A ground ball to second base. Malfitano makes the play one out. Here's Joe Torrey. And he's going to strike out for the second out of the inning. Here's Thomas. He struck out first time up. And he's going to have a rare play possibility. Let's see. It is a dribbler to the mound. And he's not a fast runner. We just have to roll higher than two to end the inning. But he doesn't. He gets a one. He legs it out. And it keeps the inning alive for Frank Bowling, who has 18 homers. Remember that play by Thomas if... Bowling does manage to get a home run here. Let's see what he does. He's going to have a fly ball to Willie Mays. That's not what you want to do. If you want to hit to the corners, you never want to hit to Willie, to Willie Mays because he is one of the greatest center fielders who ever lived. And he makes the play easily to end the inning. No runs, one hit, and one left on. Top of the fifth. So McCormick still hasn't given up a run. He will continue in this ball game. He will keep pitching. And he has a chance at a rare play. No, it's going to be a dribbler. But Thomas legged it out. Let's see if McCormick can lead it, leg it out. He has to roll a one, however. And he does. Great hustle by McCormick. You don't see pitchers hustle like that very often. Here's a Malfitano. Like we said last time, he doesn't hit in two double plays, so he's going to swing away. Hoping for the best. Okay, he contributes a five. That normally would be a walk, but with a runner on first only. If there was runners on first and second, it would have been a walk. But if it's first only, we have to roll again. And they take the bunting off. Maybe now we should bunt to fool them. Nah. Oh, we got the power column, but he popped out. Short fly out to left field. Here's Jimmy Davenport. He could bunt. Uh, not many. Well, there's four double play possibilities. But he has a short fly to left field. Two outs, man on first. And here's Willie Mays. If we hit the 40, that is an instant double in the gap and an RBI. He's going to walk him. 
Two men on from a Covey. Trying to break this game wide open here. He popped out the third and he singled last time up. And he's going to have the rare play. Now normally with two outs, you know, if it wasn't two out, you'd try to get McCormick if it's a dribbler to the mound, if you roll an even number here. But with two out, you have to go after the batter. It's going to be a rare play, however. So let's see what happens here. Double steal attempt. Well, of course they're going to throw him out. What a horrible, horrible rare play. But they try a double steal with the pitcher on second base. Well, he rolled a one to get on. Can he roll another one to get a stolen base? He doesn't. And the inning is over with McCovey at the plate. Hall of Famer. What a horrible turn of events. And it's still 2 to nothing, San Francisco. Here's Ma Roy McMillan. He ground to double play first time up. And he strikes out this time. Here's Boole. Do I... I don't know. If, can I make a... I can't make anything. I can't bring anybody in. I can just look. I can't bring in... Yeah, I can't override, so... I could if I go like this and take it off. Should I do that for them? Because normally you'd think that they would uh, bring in someone to hit right now. Okay, they're going to bring in Snow White, Frank Mantilla. Boy, they don't really have a lot of great right handers. I know, I call him Snow, but it's Sammy. Uh, Frank Mantilla, or Felix Mantilla. Huh. Oh, I'm not a, familiar with the. Bench warmers on the Braves. So we're bringing Felix. Felix the Cat's going to come in to hit. And he's going to have a possible error. If we roll higher than 41, we don't. He is out. Two out we'll put the AI back on. Here's Lee May. He singled and grounded a second. And he grounds a second once again to end the fifth. An easy to score. One, two, three. Top of the set. And they bring in, bring in Don McMahon to relieve. He's better than Boole. He is 192 ERA, 18, 8 and 6 with 14 saves. They're bringing in one of their closers right now to face McCovey. And he's going to give up a double. Because Frank Thomas isn't as wasn't good enough fielder. If he would have hit to any of these other two guys, it would have caught it. But he hit it to Thomas, and it is a double. McCovey is on second with nobody out. For Cepeda, who fouled out and lined out. Batting 300. He doesn't want to fall below 300. Here is the pitch to Cepeda. He gets a base hit up the middle. Aaron fields it. And with nobody out, well, we have to try. Okay, I thought maybe we had the option, but we don't have the option. And he's going to score. McCovey hustles home ahead of the run, the throw by Aaron. And it's now 3 to nothing, Giants. Here's the hero. Two-run home run last time up for Felipe Alou. Off the closer, McMahon. He doesn't give up many home runs. And he's going to advance the runner, Cepeda, to second on the ground ball with one out. One out on Here's Landreth. He's doubled and ground to first, unassisted. Gets a good column, but not enough. Short fly to left field. On Here's Pagan. He's grounded to pitcher and ground to short. And they intentionally walk him to get to McCormick. But he's been on twice with a walk and a single. He's a left-handed batter, so that 3-6 would be a base hit. And he's pitching a shutout, so we're going to keep him going. And he walks him. Walks the bases loaded. And here's Melfitano. He's popped out to third, flied out to right, and flied out to left. And... Hiller plays second. So we are going to bring in Chuck Hiller. And 
Here's the pitch to Hiller. Oh, so close to getting a base hit. If you were to roll a three or higher, instead of a two, it would have been a base hit and two runs scored. What a difference. Okay, so... Chuck Hiller will now play second base. Neither one are great. That's one thing that the Giants of the 60s, you know, they had some great players, unbelievable players, but they couldn't really fill the center the center of the infield. Pagan, you know, he's okay, but they really had a hole at second and base. And they really could never fill it. Here's McCormick to face Matthews. He's going to ground out to Pagan. One out, base is empty. Here's Hank. He is lined out to left and flied out to center. And he walks this time. He's going to have an excellent chance of stealing second. Because it's a B. The lower the letter, the better the chance. And he's going to have a chance at an error, too. He steals second, and Landreth, if he rolled higher than 26, it'll be an error, and he'll be at third. And he does, so Aaron goes to third on the error. Should have just hung on to the ball. One out, man on third. Now the infield is in for Adcock. He's ground to a sh double play and ground to second. And he's going to walk. So the... Screws are tightening on McCormick here in the sixth inning. One out, men on first and third. Here's Joe Torrey. Uh, should we bring in a right-hander? This is, this is game two of a double header, but you know, you gotta win this game. We got four. Right-handers in a row. They do have a ton of left-handers on the bench. And the only left-hander we have is LeMay. Dick LeMay is the only left-hander we have on in the bullpen. <sighs> we'll stick with McCormick, I guess. And he lines out the left. Will they try to tag and score? Yes, they will. And here's the roll. He scores. Aaron scores from third, and the Braves are on the board. It's three to one, but there's two out now for Frank Thomas. A home run would tie this ball game. Should we have somebody who can? He can nullify homers. Stu Miller. I just don't want them to. They'll bring in all their left-handers off the bench, and there's a lot of them. And then there's these two guys. Okay, we're going to leave in McCormick, hopefully, until after Matthews. See if we can do it. And they get out of the inning. So that's it for the Braves in the sixth. Here's Davenport. He's 0 for 3. Grounded out, struck out, flied out. The trifecta. Here's another ground out for the first out of the inning. Here's Willie Mays. He's walked twice and struck out. He's going to walk again. The third walk for Mays in this ball game. One out, man on first. Here's McCovey. Single, doubled, and popped out. Two for three. No RBIs. And he's going to have a possible double play. It all depends on bowling. Okay, so if we roll one, two, or three, it's a double play. Four, five, or six, it's a fielder's choice. And McCovey beats it out. Saves the inning. Cepeda singled and drove in a run, lined out to right field, and fouled out the second. One for three. And he's going to ground out easily to McMillan to end the inning. It's stretch time, and it's 3-1 to one Giants. Here's Frank Bowling. He singled and flied to center. And he has a possible hit here. McCormick contributes a three. And still, even then, that's the kind of it's of ballpark County Stadium was. You have to roll a six now to get a base hit. And roll a five. So he's out on the short fly out to right field. One out, base is empty. Here's McMillan. You see that the, the pitcher, McMahon, is tired now, so they should take him out. 
Fly out for McMillan was deep fly to center field, the deepest ball part of the ballpark, and Mays makes the play easily. And should have a pinch hitter here. Yes, we do. Here's Art Spangler. Good on base, man. They're hoping they hit the five column. Also, the one column has four out of five are on base here. The power, he doesn't have much power. Seeing if he can get on base in front of May. And this is why we left McCormick in. To face these left-handers off the bench. And then in the face, May and Matthews. And he strikes out. And here's Don Notabart. He's also a closer. He's got three saves. Not as good as McMahon. And here's the hero... Felipe Alou with the big two-run homer, which is the difference in this ball game here this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Fly ball deep to Thomas. He makes the play there for the first out of the inning. One out, base is empty. Hobie Landreth. He's doubled, flied out, and grounded out. And he flies out to center field for the second out. Two outs, base is empty. And Pagan, he's 0 for 3. No, he's 0 for 2 with an intentional walk. And he has a home run chance here. 6-6-6. Six, six, six. We roll one, two, three, or four. It's a home run and it's four to one. Pagan. I think he had six homers and now it's number seven for Pagan. And it's back to the three run lead for San Francisco. And like we said, we're leaving McCormick in to face May and Matthews. And he's going to get a base hit. He's getting on base all the time. Well, not. It's a ba chance at a base hit, but the county stadium has a lot to say about that. But he gets the base hit. What is... Let's look at the box score. I know he's been on... we got to look at end the play first. So he's been on. He's two for two with two walks. The mighty McCormick. Here's Chuck Hiller, who was brought in last time as a pinch hitter. Let's see, he's got that left-handed bat. Let's see if he can do something, keep this inning alive. And he has a chance to. He's going to try to beat it out. Roll a one or six. It's safe. Two, three, four, or five. He's out. And he's out to end the inning. But! One run, two hits, and one left on. Jose Bagan. He hits a home run. And it's now 4-1 to one San Francisco. And here we're going to have two more batters for Mike McCormick, who's pitching very well again today, going for win number 20. And he doesn't give up the walk. One out, base is empty. Here's Matthews, the final batter. Yes, final batter. And it's a chance at an error. Willie McCovey has to make the play. 25. Oh, no. Oh, he does it. What a great play by McCovey to prevent the error. And we get the boost check. That makes it more tempting for us. Two outs. Base is empty. All right. He's got a three-run lead. We'll keep him in. He's He deserves it. He deserves the honor of continuing on, even though he's got right-handers up the wazoo coming up. And he gets out. Hank Aaron on the ground ball to end the inning. So after eight complete, it's still 4-1 to one San Francisco. Looking to tie the National League on the final day of the season. Here's Jim Davenport. He is 0-4, for 4, grounded to second, struck out, fly to left, and grounded to short. See if he can get on base at least once. I mean, McCormick's been on four times, and Davenport's not been on at all. And he's going to be 0 for 5. Matthews makes the play for the first out. One out base is empty. Here's Mays. He is 0 for 1 with three walks. He struck out again. Second strikeout for Mays. Two outs, base is empty. Here's McCovey. He is 2 for 4. He single doubled, grounded to third, and popped to third. And he's going to ground out to short to end the inning. All right. I mean, he's earned the right. In the old days, they would not pull him here. He's not tired. He only gave, he's only give up five hits and one run. So we're going to play old school here. 
And we're going to let him continue until he gets into any trouble whatsoever. Strikes out the first guy. Adcock is gone. That's strikeout number six for McCormick. Here's Torrey. Singled, struck out, lined out. And that line out led to a sacrifice fly. Ooh, that was scary. It's a six column, but he got a short fly to left. One away from a tie in the National League. Frank Thomas singled. He's one for three. And he gets a base hit to continue on the inning. And it's another error chance for Landreth. And he does commit the error. Both errors have been by Landreth. Just hang on to the ball, Hobie. Still, the tying run is not at the plate. So Bowling will face McCormick. And he gets the out. Davenport makes the play. And the inning and the game is over. And we have a National League tie. The MVP of the game is Mike McCormick, who pitches a complete game. Six hits and one run. The loss is to Bob Boole. Let's look at the box score. Thanks to the home runs by Alou. His 22nd, a two-run shot in the fourth inning that broke the scoreless tie. And then Pagan put the icing on the cake in the eighth inning with his seventh off not Bart. And so McCormick is the hero, however, however, as he gives up only six hits, one run, it is unearned, three walks, and six strikeouts. To look at the standings, We'll just play these last games to have a complete standings. Philadelphia's trying to get to 50 wins. Can they do against the Cardinals? They cannot. Gibson gets his 14th win. It's 5-3. to three. And then the final game of the season, at least the 154-game season, Cincinnati's trying to get to 88 wins. And they don't. Pittsburgh beats them 4-2. to two. So we have our final standings. We have a tie between Milwaukee and San Francisco. Now we look at head-to-head, -head and San Francisco has beaten Milwaukee 13 times, and Milwaukee has beaten San Francisco 9 times. So in this three-game playoff, the first game will be held here in Milwaukee. They'll play game one in Milwaukee, and then they'll go to San Francisco to Candlestick Park for games th two and three. That is how we're going to do it because San Francisco had the better record in head-to-head -head play between these two teams. And as a result, we'll have game one of the playoffs between Milwaukee and San Francisco coming up. And let's see who will start in this Game one. We'll go and look at Milwaukee. Bob Boole just played. And we'll look at uh, the no the teams. Well, let me look at players. We all look at teams. Milwaukee. Availability. Roster. No, availability. Pitching. And look at October. And they will send Warren Spahn in game one to the mound. And then, yeah, he's available, right? Yes, he pitched on the 29th, and this is, so he pitched on the 29th, that was uh, Friday. Yeah, he can go in game, he can, that's, this is Warren Spawn. These are the days of Spawn and Sane and Pray for Rain, so definitely Spawn can go in game one. And then, from then on, I don't know exactly where they're going to go, they'll probably pick a Wiley, is it, what, what's his first name, Chuck Wiley? Carl Wiley. Carl Wiley would go in the game two. And then game three, they will send on short short rest, they will send Lou Burdett. So that is the pitching matchups, or pitching for Milwaukee, Spawn, Wiley, and Burdett. For San Francisco in the playoffs, for some reason they've been holding on to Marichal for this situation. And Marichal will pitch game one. He hasn't pitched, I don't know, he has, he's only had one, uh, one relief appearance since the 9th of September. He's not blacked out like these guys are, so he is available. He just 
they haven't used him. So he's going to pitch game one in Milwaukee. And then Jack Sanford will pitch game two. And then it's decision time. Now, if Lou Burdett can pitch on the first and pitch in game three, then Mike McCormick certainly can. So that's tentatively the pitching matchups for the playoffs. Marichal for San Francisco versus Warren Spahn. Jack Sanford versus Carl Wiley in game two. And Mike McCormick versus Lou Burdett in game three, if necessary. That is what we have to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen, in this National League playoff. This is the first National League playoff since 1951, 10 years ago, when the Dodgers and the Giants had that three-game playoff. And of course, we all know what happened. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant on that home run by, uh, it wasn't Dale Mitchell. What, what, what was his name? You, all, you guys, you're screaming out the name. I know you are. Well, it's, it's just escaped me. I wasn't thinking 1951. I was thinking of, uh, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he? Where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he? Where is he? he wasn't on the team. In, oh, Bobby Thompson, there he is. Bobby Thompson, the big home run. So it's a first playoff game in 10, no, it isn't. Is it 59? Was there a playoff game? No, there wasn't a playoff in 59. So there was no f playoff since 1951. They don't, there is no replay season in 1951. There's rumors that it's the next one. But uh, and certainly it'll be a game, a day one buy for me as I'm trying to get all the seasons from 50 to 80, which I am only missing the ones that they don't have available yet, which are 51 to 53. So those are instant buys for me. But that is what's coming up. The playoffs of the 1961. The Detroit Tigers sitting there licking their chops like good Tigers do, waiting. So we're going to add those. This is how you add games. Uh, let's see. Schedule. Uh, you add. Which which one? There's a. To add season options. Yes. Add unscheduled game. So. First game will be San Francisco. At Milwaukee. On the 2nd of October. Add the game. Then game three in San Francisco, no travel day. Milwaukee at San Francisco, add game, see the schedule. Now they say it's going to be LeMay and Boole, but Boole just pitched, so it can't be him. So we will go into... This is how you do this. You go into the Milwaukee availability, pitching. Bool does not pitch. It will be, who do we say? We said Warren Spahn and we said Wiley. And we're not creating this game until it's necessary. So San Francisco, just don't want to have a game on the schedule that is there and we uh, will just sit there. So no, we're not going to have LeMay, we're going to have Marichal Sanford. So go back to the schedule. There is Marichal versus Spawn in game one. Game two, Wiley versus Sanford. Hope you tune into those games. Should be exciting. First playoff in 10 years. So this is King Ikibu signing off. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.